Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of DIY MMO where I make an MMO by myself on YouTube because pfft, that's my reason for everything. That's my reason for existing even. Um, yeah, so I've done a lot of stuff uh, off screen. Um, this is still the way we left it because I haven't done much on the client but I've done much on, on other stuff because I did a bunch of stuff in between episodes. First off, you can see this is going to be important later, so I'm just going to say it now. Here it says main thread 9. If I send a message, it says message thread 18. So these are different threads. That's important. Let's just close this down for now though. So what have I done off screen? Um, one thing I did is I added basically the same kind of uh, pathfinding to the server map as I did to the client map. I also, the server no longer has um, the network spec project, it just links to the compiled assembly. So if I want to do any work on a network spec, I need to be in the client. I added a, a, a thing for serializing lists into binary for the net data. I also added a thing for strings, and I, I added a couple messages, which I will now tell you about. So I added the client request move and the server system message message. I also added the server move message. Did I? Did I really? Ah, I did. Okay. Never, yeah, I, so what I was trying to do was trying to send from the client the path that it wanted to take to the server and then have the server validate it so the server didn't have to do any pathfinding. Turns out the pathfinding really isn't that taxing right now, so this would scale to several hundred people. And um, it's fine, so I'm just going to have the server do the pathfinding because that's way easier. And solves all kinds of headache inducing problems. Um, so that's a thing. So the request move is what the client currently sends. Eve, what are you? You're the server. You are not what I want at all. Um, let's see, where is it? Oh, I also add this YouTube common um, thing which has common code between the server and, and the client. Again, the server doesn't have that, it just references the compiled assembly. That way, I don't get all those annoying, you, the project has changed things, do you want to reload? Because there's a setting to auto reload stuff, but it's only for like files and it's not for project files. So it doesn't work, which is really annoying. Um, what was I saying? Right. So when we're pathfinding, the, the client now sends... I also created a client send file for... Uh, file? Function? For uh, messages. Um, so it just sends a request to move to the position where your mouse is. That's all it does. Um, so that's the CL request move message. I guess I can look... It's not very interesting, it's just, just a vector 3 position. And an opcode. This is not that interesting. Um, that's why I did all of this stuff off screen, because me doing the same stuff that I've done before was not that interesting. Um, so that's the request move, and the system message. The, we're not using the SE move yet, actually. Let me show you that one first. Where are you? There. Again, this is a list of vector 3s, which is. This was a little bit tricky to do. Um, this is kind of ugly. So what a net list is, is a... So I want to have a, a, a list of vector threes, but for the messaging system, that has to be a net list of vector three data, except you can't automatically convert a list's contents. So what I do is when I create the net list, it, 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 um, Con converts it to the proper network data values and then when you want to get the value like the value is a list list of t but t here is the network data and we want to have a list of vector 3 
So what you do is you call to list with the type that you want it to be, and then it will cost the value of all the things in your list to the destination. And this works. I verified that this works. So that's that's lovely. That's amazing. Um, that's the and the SE system message is just a system message. So once we have a chat box, that will probably go into the chat box with a special font color. Once we have font colors, and everything will be gravy. Um, yeah, it's just a string. It's not that interesting. Um, so. When you send a request to move, that goes into the on message on the server, which now has code in it because it didn't before. Um, I've also added this whole debug client message thing. And uh, the server has debug server messages that it just says which kind of message is coming in if you set it to true and um, what the length is and what the length of that debug code is. It's just make makes it easier for me to spot if there's a problem somewhere, like if I'm... Um, one thing I did was the, the system message, I forgot to change the opcode for it, so it was sending server move instead of server system message, which was dumb, but fortunately I had this debug stuff, so I could, uh, yeah. Wait, why am I doing this? I don't even need this, do I? I don't. That was old code that I had not removed. Yeah, so I could just see, oh, it's, it's the wrong op code. I'm an idiot. Seeing that you're an idiot is always a useful thing. So we can remove this now, which was me showing you that the main thread of the server and um, all, the, all the sockets are running in different threads, which is a problem because that means you have to synchronize threads, so you can't just, just do a thing. Right now, when you get a request move, it does a pathfinder, um, it does a run. So first, the client does its own pathfinding, which is just to see if you can get there. If you can, then you request a move, and then the pathfinding runs again on the server. And this has a max maximum passes set to 100. Can we see this? No, we can't. That's a bit of a shame. Um, so what this does is if you give it a maximum passes over zero, then this will only run so long as you haven't done that number of loops through this code. Basically, it hard caps the A star from taking up all the resources and hanging the server for like forever. I actually don't know if, because this is all in a different thread, right? I don't know with IO completion ports if that is actually a problem. I'll have to check. I don't think it's all its own thread is the thing. So I can't just assume that all of this can always run at once. Because that's literally impossible. You can't even have that many threads. I think it's more like a, a it uses the C sharp built in thread pool. So yeah, you want to have this kind of managed so this doesn't hungrily eat up all your resources. So it runs the Pathfinder, the same thing we did last time, except it just, you know, uses the, 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 the tile that the client requested, and then it has a path, I think. Yeah, it has a path, and then it just writes out uh, the tiles to the path. If it can't find a path, then it sends the system message, could not find path to the destination. Which the client, um, why does, why is this open? This should not be open. Go away. Then the client, um, oh man, I totally lost my train of thought there. Yeah. Uh, okay, so yeah, it just gets a system message, and for now, the client just writes that as console.write line, so it's also not very interesting. What we want to do. That was 10 minutes just to explain what I've done. Jesus Christ, how, how do I get through these videos and get anything accomplished? So, what we want is for this. To start sending move messages to uh, to the client. I don't know if I want to do a tile by tile or do the entire path. 
That is an int- I probably want to do the entire path at once. Yes, I do want to do the entire path at once. Okay. So we want... First of all, we want something to synchronize all of this. So the game client is running in a different thread. And what, we, what we're going to do... Let's do that now. We're going to do... Um, are you using Franco? Are you? You are. Okay. So heartbeat. How does this work? Does this work that way? Oh, it does! How jolly good! And um, milliseconds is 50, so that's 20 steps per second. That's fine. Heartbeat dot on beat. Do we want variable time step? I don't know what this defaults to. Probably, it's probably fine. Current time? Huh. Is that something you get back? I, I forget my own code, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Okay. Why did you not insert the thing? Why, why you, why you, why you know, why you know, why you know work? Ah, this is the intelligence broken again. This is so frustrating. Now oh, where did I go? What am I doing? Where, who am I? Who are you guys? Okay, let's try this again. I don't want to do my own. My God, is this? This is an event, isn't it? Ugh, for fuck's sake, really? Time span, time span. I don't know what what these time spans are. Why won't you let me auto insert a thing? On beat plus is. Press tab to insert. Again! Thank you! Jesus fucking Christ, was that so hard? Yeah, I'm sorry for being a bit uh, perturbed, but I'm not feeling so well, which makes me a little bit cranky. And then Visual Studio makes me a lot cranky, and then you get what you get. Uh, so this will basically run until. It's just run forever or something. No, until I call stop, I think. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I won't have a way to stop it for now, but I'll, I'll have one later. If you click the X, it's going to stop it either way. So that's fine. Um, so this will call this function. We don't want a variable time step, I have decided. Variable time step means that... If the server gets laggy... Actually, we can do that. Yeah, we can do a variable time step if that's the default. But that might be problematic. I don't know. I'm going to go with no for now. Variable time step is if the server is getting behind on logic, it's just going to do multiple loops in one go, thereby saving processing power, thereby hopefully catching up, which is not a guarantee. Um, so this is gonna run, gonna run 20 times per second. So this is basically every time this runs, that's a tick. Um, do I have, yes, I do have a list of clients. So I'm gonna do the same here. I'm gonna lock around the... Oh, this is a list of client. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to lock my my collection of clients. Um, this is a threading thing again, and I'm going to copy it. Why am I going to copy it so that I don't need to keep this locked for the entire time I'm doing the logic? So. I believe as long as the client's copy has the client in, the client isn't going to be, you know, going away because it can't be memory collected, which is good, I think. We think that's a good thing. That prevents errors. This is the problem with the servers. You have to do all this threading stuff because you can't do everything synchronously and it becomes a giant mess. And then for every client and client co client's copy, we do client.update. 
And then we do current time, I guess. We do both. Yeah, let's just do both. So generate that method stub for me, please. This is a convenient thing that you can do. You can tell Visual Studio to do a thing and then it will do a thing and you don't have to write all that mess yourself, which is wonderbar. Um, okay, so now we're in a client. So we need, we need a lock or something. Uh. Hmm. Let me just figure out how I want to design this, because that is a good question. I have not given that any thought, unfortunately. So this is uh, just random stuff. I'm going to have to refact this, because this is horrible. All of this stuff should not be mixed in, in one class. It's just not good. Wait, this is the client! That's not what I want at all! Is this, is this in the, yeah, it's in the I.O. server. No, that's not what I want. That's not what I want at all. We want this to be in our game client. That's what we want. That's what we want here. I was getting very confused. So then this is not going to work anymore, is it? Because clients is client and not game client, but now it is. Which is going to cause some issues. Yeah, because... Yeah, we need to do this as as a game client, not just as a normal client. And then that will work. And then this also needs to be a game client list. And then this also needs to be a game client list. And then this also needs to be a game client list. Because clients is game clients. I don't know why that worked. Oh, I do know why that worked. But it doesn't matter. Um, wow, this is a very scattershot kind of episode. But that's fine. Okay, so we make this copy and we're calling update and now everything is fine. So we go to the update method. So what I could do is instead of consuming the messages in the thread, I could just push them into a queue and process all the messages synchronously once the server ticks over. The problem with that is that means every server tick is going to take longer because it all has to be done synchronously, synchronously including like stuff like pathfinding, which means that the, the server threads are going to take longer and I'm not using the opportunity to do stuff in a background thread that I could do. Um, so I do think that's a good uh, idea. But then again, if I do like an action system, so where like, okay, you come in here and it reads the opcode and then processes the message and then puts an action into a queue for a, a client, then you're kind of doubling up on most of these, I think, because most of these will just put the action in basically the same way um, as, as the message. So, yeah. Hmm. That's a good question. Maybe I could do like, like a lambda function. So that I don't really know what's in the queue. The queue just calls a bunch of functions. That could be an interesting design. I don't know if it's a good design. Jesus Christ, this is hard. I hadn't thought about it, this at all, and I tried to be prepared. I tried so hard to be prepared. 
Um, yeah, this happens. Like, it's like you, you're programming and then you're like, oh shit, I don't know how to structure this or design this. I don't know what's the right way to do it. Let's just sit here and think for half an hour. So I'm going to do that and then I'll bring you back once um, that's a thing. Okay. Okay. So after thinking about it in a while, I did do a callback type things so a client action is basically just a wrapper around for for an action which is a, a delegate which is a function that takes no arguments and has no return value and then when you call perform action it just calls the function that you gave it um i also put that in the game client i use a lock free queue which uses atomic um atomic operations so they you don't need to lock around putting stuff in this or taking stuff out of it which is great i use this a lot when i'm doing threading and that's just a list of client actions unfortunately i realized if i'm doing the pathfinding in a background thread then the location by the time it says okay follow the path may actually diverge from what the location is in the pathfinder and then you have a problem so to keep things simple we're not gonna do that so yeah i just went through all that effort to do something that we're not gonna do um so we're not gonna do this actually not at all so we don't need this so we can name this back to location because we're not using this room a different set so we don't need to copy it um yeah can't do that sucks what we are gonna do is actions dot nq new find action find path message dot location Yes, and you, you don't have to do, uh, you don't have to do this. You can just do this. But I don't think that's nearly as clear. So in my coding um, guidelines, you should do this. Why is this? Can I get a Lambda expression to type TCP weed? Weed? What are you on about? New client. No, not new client, new client action. My god. <clears throat> so that calls find path with the location. So this needs to be find path. And then this is vector 3 location. Target. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. So it's a little bit unfortunate. There are ways of doing it in the background and then like making sure that it always works. And it's probably not an issue either way. But you don't want to, you want to keep things simple when you start off with this, something like this, because it's gonna increase in complexity. And if you start optimizing for stuff that doesn't need optimizing early on, then you're gonna have a whole mess of code that you, that's hard to maintain and hard to build off of. So we're gonna keep things, uh nice and uh, fluffy and simple to begin with. Threading is a pain in the ass. Just so you know, never thread kids, not even ones. Um, this needs to go here now. Um, so you, this becomes target. And then the path becomes this, and then if we can't find the path, that becomes that. And that's cool. That is amazing. We probably want to um, consume the first node in the path right away. So let's do that. Follow path, I think. So what is path? Is that already? That is already. I am amazing. That is already a thing. So, um, so we want follow path is void follow path. Oh, we also want to do the update function. Let's do that first. So while, um, actually, let's do this. 
No, we can't. Bang! I need to explain what, what I'm like, because my thoughts go all over the place when I'm programming. So what I wanted to do was like, store the count of the actions, but it doesn't have a count, it just has an empty because it's a lock free queue, which works differently. So while not actions dot is empty. Now we want to pop one off. Action is actions dot dq. So that will give us an action. And then we want to consume the action by performing it. So that's nice and clean. It doesn't give you the time, which is a little bit unfortunate, but to uh, remedy that, we can just... I don't... this isn't very good practice, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So... No, we shouldn't do follow path here. I'll explain why in a second. Just let me let me do the thing. And this dot at left is left. This dot current time is current time. So now if I need the elapsed time or the current time, I can just query them in in my actions without having to send them along to every action I ever make, which is irritating. Um so we don't want this to be, uh, well, we could probably put follow path in here, but what we want to do, first we want to consume all the actions, okay? And then we want to update the world's, the world and the client state um, according to what it is doing. So actions are things that you do and that said certain variables on on the client. Like, now we have a path. Um, we actually want to do a set path. Set path. Public void set path list vector three path. Okay. Why you not work? Oh, you do work. Okay. This dot path is path. Um. Mm. Yeah, if we're already moving, I don't want it to reset the time. So how do I how do I do this elegantly? Let me think about that for a second. Maybe implement that off screen as well, and just tell you what I'm doing. Okay. So, I need to stop doing okay after cuts, but there. Um, I added a couple of uh, last move time, so that's the time when the client last move, and the move speed, which is how long it takes for the client to move. So, after it does all the actions, we want to do update the world on the client state, so it checks if the path, if there is a path. I also changed the path to, uh, Q, there, to Q. If there is a path and the current time is bigger than the last move plus the move speed, so we're ready to move again, then we follow the path and then we increment that value until that is no longer true. Follow path, just, just the safety bit checking. I mean, I know I've already checked it here, but I don't know where I'm gonna call this from. So having double safety is never a bad thing because this takes no time to run at all. Um, so this is why we did that with a list we'd had to like do remove at index zero, which is not very performant, whereas with a queue it's meant to dequeue the first item in the list. So um, we set the location to a new position and then we write the line location just to see if this is actually gonna work. Um, when we set the path, we also send it to the client. So there's two ways I could have done this. Either every time it does follow path, it sends a new message to the client. You are now at X and Y, blah de blah de blah. But you know that's subject to lag and will not lead to a smooth movement 
on the client. So what I've elected to do instead, I'm just sending the entire path and letting the client figure it out itself. It should mostly line up with what the server is thinking that you're doing. So that should be fine. And that way, client side will have a smooth movement pattern as opposed to something influenced by the lag, which means that people will be warping back and forth. Which is bad. Uh, let's see if this even if this even evens. Uh, eh. Wait, why am I? Where is this coming from? Because I'm not doing it over here anymore. Let's just do this. Because that does not look right to me. Uh, just doesn't look right at all. Yeah, it is going in follow path. Oh, because I don't set... Yeah, okay. I see. I see where you're going with this game. I forgot to set the last move when I set a new path. And that is why I didn't just have this dot path is bloody blah in here, but put it in its own function so when you set the path you will always set the last movement. Last move speed. Um, but that doesn't work. So what we need to do is do this. Now this question mark means that this this is a value type, so this can't be nil. If you add the question mark, then it can be nil, or it can be a value. So that's useful. Um, okay, and last move dot has value so yeah no hmm no if last move if not last move dot has value so if if this if we've set a new path this won't have a value so we wanted to follow a path and then we want to set the last move is right now Right, and then it'll work. So we set this to last move. Um, if we already have a path, we we don't. Do we want? So if you move. If you're already moving and you change directions, we probably wanted to keep the movement time that it has. So if path dot count greater than nil, and we need to do this before we set the path, otherwise this is always going to be through. True, sorry. Um, now we want to set last move is null. So if we weren't moving, if we if we were done moving, oh, yeah, okay, that's I'm using I was using path and not this dot path. Um, if we weren't moving, and let's just do is null or this dot path dot count. Um, hang on. No, we want to do this if it's null, or if it, if the path is empty. Then we want to set the last move to null, otherwise we want to keep moving. Okay, let's see if that works any better then. Ooh, this is quite complicated, isn't it? Yay, it's doing the thing that I wanted it to do. Okay, so that's fine. Let's remove this. And um, now we have to do it in the client as well. Yay! Uh, I need to do that in a better way, but for now this will, this will do. This will do. So we want to do the same thing, really. We want to do the same thing. 
Hmm. Let me just do this off camera. And I'll bring you back once it's doing a thing. Well then, I went into the client and I changed the path from a list of a queue. I've also, I don't uh, show the path anymore because we don't need to debug the paths anymore. We just need to follow them. Um, I basically copied this code from the server. Uh, if we get a message to move, we go to on move. We give it the message. We set the path as the message path, set the path. It's the same as it is on the server, exactly the same. In the update function, this is also exactly the same. Follow path is also exactly the same, except we set the camera position. So uh, let's, that's, this is quite a bit of work, but let's see if that works. I hope it does. I did that wrong. I need to, also that was my phone. I need to first start the server, because that is convenient. Okay, let's see if this works. So I'm I'm going here in this little tile here. Oh my god, it is totally working. And now we're moving. Now this, this is subject to lag because the server is doing this. If we send a request move, we have to wait until the message gets to the server and then we wait until the message gets back to us. Um, this is the case of Ragnarok Online which is what I'm kind of basically modeling this movement system after. I don't know why it sometimes moves so uh, erratically. That's interesting. That's, I don't know why it does that, but that's interesting. Um, I totally forgot what I was saying now. Oh yeah, Ragnarok Online. So it is subject to lag. So if you have lag and then you click, you have to wait a while until your character starts moving. That was acceptable in Ragnarok Online, so it's gonna work for me. Eventually, we probably want to do some kind of um, client-side prediction, which is I could I could do this very easily, really. Instead of waiting for the the server to agree with me where the path is, I just start moving my client on the path that I find myself, because theoretically both paths should always um, be the same. Now, because this is uh, entirely in the client, I can just animate this and the server doesn't give a shit. The server is like, well, you're either on a tile or you're on the next tile. You're never between tiles, but the, the client is gonna, you know, do a thing where um, you uh, show the, the dude sliding between tiles. It's actually a girl, because it has boobies. But, you know, uh, there you go. So, um, yeah, we have mouse movement. We are almost a real game. Not really, but we're getting, we're getting somewhere. So what happens if I'm already moving and I, I start moving in a different direction? Yeah, it just, it just keeps the movement. It doesn't instantly change directions, which is, which is what we want. Um... What I am going to probably do is add some kind of way to simulate lag in the server for a particular client so that I can eventually test how lag is going to influence all of this stuff. But that is going to be a different episode. A very, very different episode. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy that we now, like, we do have client server movement. But that is just the thing that we have now. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, so next time, we wanted to, to, we want this to be smooth, but I don't. I'm not placing any priority on that. It's more important that we can move at all than it is to be able to move smoothly. I feel. Um, so next time, I'm probably gonna start dealing with multiple clients and being able to see each other. I think. That is more important. Once multiple clients can be logged in at once and see each other and move each other properly, um, then we can add chat and we basically have like a little sandbox chat client thingy. A really bad one, but still. I'm quite pleased with how this worked out. I'm really well pleased. I'm chuffed, you could say. Anyway, I hope you're as excited as I am, but probably not. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!
バイ。